Hi everyone. So today I am going to be inoculating some logs with shiitake plugs. Recently, well I shouldn't say recently, I did a video about how easily it was to do wine cap mushrooms. I'll link that video down below, but I'm experimenting with different kinds of mushrooms. I'm thinking the next kind is going to be morel. Is it morel? Morel. Because those are pretty easy to do too. Shiitake mushrooms are supposed to be like garlicky and meaty, which is why they're so popular. So I'm hoping maybe I like shiitake mushrooms. We'll see. I got the wine cap mushrooms from a place called Field and Forest. This time I'm trying a different place called North Spore. So I actually got this kit for Christmas. And when you first get the kit, they don't actually send you the plugs. You get the plugs whenever you're about ready to inoculate your logs. Unlike, unlike the um, wine cap mushrooms, which you can store that, it came in like a sawdust form, you can store that in the fridge for up to six months. But with these, you want to be ready to do it. So in my kit at Christmas time, what it came with, came in this box like this. Now you can get the kit with or without this. This is the, to cut off of the logs. Cut, cut your mushrooms off the logs but my husband got me the kit with it and this is what this looks like so it's got a little brush on this end here to clean any dirt off your mushroom and then this opens up for you to cut your mushroom off your log and this kit was I believe what $36 mm -hmm. about 36 so once you have this kit then you can just get if you wanted to do more logs the next year you can just purchase the plugs and is that what they're called plugs yeah plug spawn so you can get it in a hundred i believe 500 and a thousand with norse spore <laughs> and That's i believe field and forest you can get somewhat similar to that what else comes in the kit is it actually comes with the size drill bit that you need so you have to provide the drill, but it comes with the size drill bit. This is, what was this, half an inch? You know what this is? Mm -hmm. It tells yeah. me in here. I'm not quite sure. But if you already had this drill bit, then, you know, you didn't, you wouldn't necessarily need this kit. It also comes with wax, with a wax dauber, because you want, after you put the plugs into the wood, you want to cover the plugs up with the, this wax. So I'm going to have to melt the wax. And then it supplies like a little dauber. So you're gonna dip this into the wax and and then also in the box it came with this voucher. So I was opening this up on camera and I was just like, where's the actual spawn? And then I saw this voucher. So it says important, keep this card, and it has the code that you have to put to get your voucher. And you wanna uh, get this about two weeks, two weeks before because it takes a week and then you can have like up to a week to actually put the spawn into the logs. One thing when I was looking at the other kits was that Field and Forest had this really neat, um, it was like a stopper that you would put on your drill bit. You you just could uh, go right into the wood to the stopper. North Spore didn't have that, but my husband came up with a really clever idea, masking tape. So I'm just going to tape where I want to stop drilling. I'm gonna take a plug. Lay the plug right here, and then I'm gonna tape right above it. Yep, that should be about right. And then I'll know where to stop. How much farther did you go above it? I didn't, just barely enough to just put to put the wax wa wax on top of it. Mm -hmm. So when should you plant these? I'll throw a picture up of what I saw online on the website. But winter is good, fall is best, spring was the worst, and I'll tell you why, and summer was okay. So why you don't want to do it in the spring is because you don't want, you have to have fresh logs. So you want to have cut your tree down pretty close to the time you're going to inoculate them. I actually just cut these down so they're underneath this tarp here just a couple of weeks ago. Um, that tree right there. I'm not going to show that mess, probably. It's behind me anyway, so whatever. I can zoom in on it. Right there you go. So you don't want to be cutting your tree down 
whenever it's starting to bud, when the leaves are starting to form, because it's putting all of that energy from the trunk of the tree into that part of the tree. And you want a really healthy chunk of wood to be putting your, uh, your spawn into. Basically, you don't want a stressed out tree. You want your tree to be dormant. So uh, fall is when it's losing all the leaves. It's going into dormancy. Winter, it's still dormant. And spring and summer, it's putting energy into you know the leaves and flowers and whatnot. And there are certain types of wood that are best for inoculation. I'll put a list of those up. Healthy trees. So you don't want your tree that you're um, inoculating to have any kind of disease. You don't want it to be rotten on the inside. You don't want the bark to be falling off of it because obviously that means that the tree started to dry up or is dying. So you want to try to pry the bark off. If the bark doesn't come off, you're good. Why do you want the bark on the tree trunk? It's because it holds in moisture and moisture is what's going to cause that spawn to grow and create the mycelium that ends up making the mushroom. How big do you want your logs to be? So you want your logs to be between four and six inches in diameter. You don't want them to be too big and you don't want them to be too small. So we're gonna get to inoculating the logs now and I'll show you the placement, how far apart I'm going to be drilling the holes. Put your drill bit in. Okay, let's uncover these bad boys. Now, when I was doing some research, I had these covered only because it was supposed to snow, and I thought I was going to be doing this sooner, and I didn't want them to be like frozen to the ground, but I was reading that soaking your logs before you do this is a good idea. But mine, they feel kind of moist, so they're good. So I'm going to pick out a couple here. I think I'm going to do this one and we'll see how far we get. So bark looks good. You want to do a diamond pattern. So start two inches in. So I'm going to say one, two, and that's definitely way more than two inches. Two inches in. And I'm going to drill down. And then you're gonna just do another two inches. That is hard. So you'll do that all the way down. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over in between the middle of this one and you're gonna do another row over here. And then you'll do one over here. And that creates a diamond pattern. So you'll do a row all the way up here and a row all the way up here. And I think I'm, I'm not going to, you can do the log all the way around. So I've got a diamond pattern. Okay, let me see here. I've got a hundred plugs and I'm going to drill a hundred holes into either two or three of these logs. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your plugs and a hammer and you're going to hammer one of these into every single hole. Get real close. Put it there and then it just goes right in nice and smooth. I believe that's mycelium, the white stuff, the powdery stuff that's all over. So they're already like doing their thing. At least I hope that's what that is. <laughs> they go in real easily. So far, this is quite an easy project. How long did it take me to drill the holes, dear, would you say? Mm, I've not got, even 10 minutes. I've got... Uh, Five minutes. I think I've got like more than half of them done. I still have two more logs I gotta do.
so this is what the plugs look like close up. And they almost look like they're already starting to grow something on them. So once I have all the plugs in the pieces of wood, I then am taking this uh, green bean can and reusing it to melt the wax. My husband's just warming up the tin can with a blowtorch. You could probably melt the wax on the top of the stove or some other safer method, but this is how we decided to do it. All right, so got some of the wax melted and then you just take your little dauber thing and you're gonna seal, you're gonna seal off all the holes. Hopefully it comes with a lot of wax. So this is gonna help hold the moisture in, letting it do its thing. Where you want to put them while you wait for them to grow the mushrooms. You want it to be in a kind of protected area. Protected from high winds and protected from really really cold temperatures. So my plan is, um, and you kind of want to prop them off the ground a little bit. I'm going to, let me take this one here. I'm going to put them over here behind my compost bin. I'm going to put them over here behind my compost bin. bottom walls. And then I'm going to lay these across the top like so. I'll go get the other three. I'm not going to them up with the tarp unless it's going to get like super duper windy which it does sometimes here or it's going to get like really really low temperatures like below 20 degrees otherwise I'll just leave them to do their thing top of this tarp to get myself on the leg ta-da 100 shiitake plugs done in how long was that 30 40 minutes and they can grow mushrooms for I'm not quite sure how many years I'll look that up and tell y'all but I know at least three years because I was looking at the comments in the reviews and stuff and someone said they were going on three years with their logs so that's pretty impressive enjoy your day bye guys